Turn the mic off. Okay, there we go. Hi, my friends. How are you doing? Thanks for joining. Sorry, there we go. Okay. Um, this apparently is a first where I was so busy that I forgot to announce the live stream, but I'm happy to see that you are here. And also the software champs. So everything here is kind of strange. Let me put this over here so I can actually look at you while I do the settings here. Is Oh, there we have that. That is off. That's not good. That has to be on. Safe. So that's a bit of chaos. Hi. How are you doing? Hi, Jens. How are you doing? Thanks for joining from Germany. Let's pop out the chat and move this over here again. There we go. Sorry. All right. I'm ready. Hi, Eric from Vienna Meidling. How are you doing? DS Gaming from South Africa. Hi. Thanks for joining. Mickey from the USA. Hi, Roland from Cork. Hi, Diana from Ireland. Hi. How are you doing? I hope all of you have a good um what is it halloween <laughs> oh my god <laughs> okay Whew. oh man all right there we go ah maurizio hi how are you doing thanks for joining buona sera that's good uh blind angel hi from germany how are you doing thanks for joining ah uh, Raman, Rahaman, hi, thanks for joining. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, good. Oh, God. All right, um, let's get started here. So, again, we're going to do a little bit of editing, of course, today and the review of the week for the challenge of, um, of Halloween, right, of this week. So let's do that. Maurizio from Italy. That's nice to know. Hi, <laughs> thanks for joining. All right. Okay. So, um, how is your how is your Halloween going? How are you doing right now? Is there trick or treating going on this year? I mean, basically, you're, you're wearing a mask while you trick or treat, so maybe that's kind of fits together. <laughs> you can do all kinds of scary, uh, scary things with a mask, even with a like these kind of FFP masks, stuff like that. Uh, put a little film blood on that stuff like that could be cool. Or, I don't know, you could go, I don't know. Mm. Ah, oh, by the way, coffee, here we go. Uh, it's mostly an American tradition. We don't really have that in Europe. I've never trick or treated in my life, but I think it's cool. It sounds, it looks cool, right? It looks awesome. All right, uh, let me see. Uh, by the way, the new online course is out. As, as you probably know, I've published this yesterday on my channel. Uh, by the way, also, again, I want to remind you that last time I was super late. So this is why now in such a short uh, 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 time, the second, the next course is coming out. Um, yeah, but it's really great. I put so much knowledge into that. It was a lot of work to create that. But I think I, I touched a lot of interesting topic that I'm getting asked about over and over again. And by the way, another thing I want to point out that's really important is um, it. This is about understanding how composition works, what to what to put where, how to work with color, how to work with light and contrast, how all these kind of interesting things and a lot of different um, uh, knowledge on how to how to create an interesting story and how to like tell bring over emotion all these kind of things and a lot of art a lot of good creation a lot of good design is about an understanding how design works as a concept the technical part is also important but it's not as difficult as the part of actually creating an interesting composition so this is why this is very important um, and I think a lot of people might not know that. They might think, okay, technical skill is everything. And then when you know how to use the program, you can already do nice pictures. But it's not, that's not really the case. Um, understanding how to work. Uh, for example, colors are such an important thing for impression, for telling a story, for setting up the mood, all these kind of things. It's really important to understand um, how these things work uh, and, and how they work together. It's like an orchestra, right? If you don't have like r nicely written notes, it doesn't really matter how good you can play the instrument if the melody isn't nice and if there isn't like, you know, a good orchestra playing together with all the element elements, you don't have good music, right? No matter how good you 
can play the instrument itself. That's just the technical part. The more important part is the artistic part, and this is what this course is about. Okay, anyways, uh, let's get started here. Let me have a look at the, at the um, chat real quick. Jim from Kentucky. Hi, Mike from Prague. How are you doing? Thanks for joining, Mickey. Um, yes, only for kids here. Interesting. But I think the adults have parties, right? There's all these kind of um, more adult-themed uh, uh, costumes. <laughs> we do have these kind of parties here too, though. That's the thing we took, not the not the kids thing. Uh, maybe uh, no, I don't think we do the kids thing. Uh, Barry in Australia, hi, thanks for uh, joining. And Soda Pop, um, can you make a video explaining LUTs? I made actually several videos explaining LUTs. Let me show you real quick um, how to find stuff on my channel because this is often also a question. And I have created hundreds of videos uh, so far, which is really crazy when you think about it. But uh, let me switch over here real quick. Uh, there we go. Boom. So now you can see my screen. When you go to my channel, um, like you can just when you go to one of my videos, let's just see how to get to my channel first. So here's one of my videos. This is about the new course uh, that is out. Oh, sorry, I have something in my eye. Um, and then you click here on my name. Oh, sorry, there's my big hat is there. Uh, there is my name. You click on that right there and then you come to the channel and then on the right side of the channel over here there is this little um how do you say not a lens um uh, uh this search icon my brain is really i don't know strange today you click on that it's very hidden it, it should be always like that where it says search but it doesn't and then you can enter whatever you want and for most topics i actually have a video so let's enter lots here and then you can see half multiple of them like lots explained create your own lots is also there oh there's a part one I, there should be a part two somewhere um then yeah i have created lots for you several of them powerful lot tricks um i have different lot packs here and there's more lot packs here um lot secrets live stream oh interesting okay so i did a lot of stuff with that um yeah so that's out there um, so and now you know how you can find that right and there is like let me see on the playlist I have created does it say here hmm I should delete some of these playlists these are the private playlists mostly okay this doesn't really tell me anything um, here affinity photo tutorials what does this say I have created 371 videos about affinity photo wow okay look at that look at how long that list is with all that stuff here that is crazy and there's still more um more to tell um about all these different things look at that wow 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 so many stuff crazy okay what is this gradient why is there three different videos here did I add this three times? I don't know. Maybe I haven't created 370 videos, um, but I have. I have very. I'm. I'm very sure I've created over 300 videos. All right. Uh, let's go on. Wait a second. Oh, okay. It looks like that. Oh, that's good. Okay. Uh, let's go to Unsplash here and find some pictures to edit today. Uh, I thought maybe a portrait, and then we put a skull on that or stuff like that could be interesting. So let's. Uh, skull first also let me see what the chat is there we have a beautiful skull here uh let me see hi chapwin from the usa virginia how are you doing magnifying glass that's it thank you very much eric uh hi manuel hi soda pop hi what does manuel sell what about channels spare channels and related spare channels and really related to them uh what do you mean oh you mean the channels in in affinity photo the color channels channels i haven't i think i don't think i have made a video about that hi steven from belfast how are you doing and augusto uh you've been a great teacher oh thank you very much that makes me happy that i can help you why am i so big here oh because that's the stream view i could maybe move myself a little bit over there we go uh, okay so let's go on here uh what kind of skull should we take maybe this one or maybe this one is pretty scary here very dramatic light let's decide on some of those and then 
Ooh, we could actually like, hmm, let's see. So I have no plans for, oh, this is a nice skull here. I'm a huge skull fan, to be honest. Um, I haven't decided yet on what to do today, but we will come up with something pretty cool, I'm sure. So let's see. Ooh. All right, we have you. We have used this. I can remember when we used this in a live stream. We created a pretty cool image with that. Actually, when we go to Instagram, and I haven't been on, I haven't posted on Instagram in ages. I need to go back to that. I say that every single time, to be honest. Uh, by the way, by the way, let me know. Did you watch the videos from Amazon? Uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, from from Adobe Max conference that has been happening in recent days. Also, Facebook Connect has been happening. There's so few, so many conferences recently. Um, really crazy. I took part uh, in uh, like watching some of them, and then in on the Adobe page, they also had a networking thing where you could. Uh, connect with other people. That was really nice. I think Serif needs to make a conference like that online where we can have lectures, where we can have rooms to talk with people, where uh, uh, creators and artists and all kinds of things can connect. Um, they should do some. May, do, are they doing something like that? And I'm just missing that. But if they do, I feel like they should invite me. Um, so I should know about that, but maybe not. I don't know. Look at that. This is what we did when we do 101 weeks ago is Instagram is in baby mode. Why is this in weeks? Why is it not in months or years? Anyways, you can see here, this is a, like a, like a time lapse of the, um, of what we did back when I still streamed like five, six hours. <laughs> that was the crazy times. I kind of miss them by the way. Um, I like streaming for long. Look at how cool it looks. It's pretty interesting. Um, maybe I should redo some of my old works to see how it would, how I would improve on them. Um, yeah, so that was that was um, both of them were very uh, very interesting. Let me see the chat here. Um, hi, Snesana from Serbia. How are you doing? Um, yes, about them. Oh, okay, about their channels. I have I haven't done a video about them yet. I I might do a video about them yet. To be honest, I'm not using the channels very much. I have to figure out what to do with them. You can do a nice glitch effect, but other than that, I'm not quite sure. Mm. Have, we have to look into that. Um, all right. Uh, let me know if you have seen these, uh, like any kind of lectures from these two conferences, any kind of things. Um, the Adobe, like, by the way, it does not matter if you use Adobe or not. The conference is the interesting thing because there were really interesting artists and photographers and filmmakers and all kinds of people talking about really, really interesting stuff. Um, even if you don't use the software, doesn't matter. It's just the, the knowledge, you know, the, 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 the insights, the understanding that I found really interesting and also kind of really cool, interesting ideas out there. Um, yeah. So that's that was really cool. Anyways, um, so let me know what you thought. Did you see the metaverse stuff from 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 Zuckerberg from Facebook? Um, I was a little bit disappointed in the in the like that he he made a long video. Uh, Zuckerberg and talk with his employees and stuff about the metaverse idea. It was kind of lame to be honest like old ideas that we have seen decades ago um not what i would have expected at all i thought they bring like mind-blowing content because there is mind-blowing content already out there and then they they brought some really lame stuff like oh you can have a virtual home where you can meet your friends and you can show your trophies and what what are you talking about this is stuff that playstation has done like 15 years ago there was i think playstation 2 had that or playstation 3 maybe the 3 because i didn't have the 3 um they had playstation home was really lame nobody cared about having a home where you can meet your friends digitally and then windows tried that like i don't know how long was that ago 30 years ago where you have a windows that looks like a room nobody wanted that so I don't I was really disappointed in that. There's so many cool applications especially with augmented reality and then like they mostly talked about avatars and like really is that the thing how we look digitally like these 
goofy looking kind of mix between Nintendo and and I don't know a uh, a flight security kind of video style avatar man nah, that was not so cool to be honest anyways mm. read in help app what lot a kind of new to affinity what are lots yeah lookup tables like lots is basically a mathematical element or like filter that replaces it searches for a certain color and replaces it with another color in the sense of the color like the hue the brightness and the saturation um yeah and, and that's basically what it is but you can apply a look from one uh, photo to another uh, by that uh, not completely because like i said it searches for the source color so you need to set the original photo up in a certain way so the lot works with that that's an important part it's not it's not like a one click and boom you have that look right um but you never have that maybe we get that with ai um but right now we don't have that okay let's let's go here for some creative stuff uh let me know what you think about the um yeah the creative things uh, from these conferences anyways let's look for a portrait here or maybe let's let's see which maybe which what do we get here? Oh, we had these moons that we used that. Oh, there's already something with a skull. Okay, cool. Um, ooh, maybe something like this. Let me see. I want to. Ooh, there are already some pretty cool pictures here. Um, that's also nice with the flower. Okay. Ooh, that's also nice really cool things i love uh, uh uh unsplashed such a nice page um yeah but these these augmented reality things that is a huge part right uh and i thought like if you own facebook and instagram and whatsapp you should understand a little bit more about all these kind of how that flows in culture all these kind of um applications and how culture has changed visually and, and talk about some really interesting stuff there, right? Um, but yeah, it was a little bit low. Uh, the Adobe conference on the other side, it was really inspiring. It was really cool. They did some interesting changes and, um, oh, no. Mm, should, we, should we do that here? That is kind of, it already has a nice light set up and then we can add some other stuff. Let's do that. That's kind of, is it sharp? Mm, yeah. It's sharp enough. Let's. Oh, oh, there's more pictures. Wait a second. Is this also from Zachary? Yes. Okay, let's look at what he has done. Oh, available for hire. Interesting. So now they have this kind of. This works like Behance, where you kind of can hire people directly from the page. That's a very interesting. That's a good idea. Nice addition. Oh, we have some flames here. I want that. Um okay there is oh okay no hmm hmm um this is also nice there she looks to the side i don't want to use that this is light nice from the light but mm, let's use this stuff here okay let's download some things here and then we get started um okay i need to make a folder here zero 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 um 30 oh let's write backwards 21 10 30 uh stream okay good so now we should be able to find that let's save this and then yeah let's use this that should be good and then what kind of skull should we use i want to use this skull we want to play with that a little bit that is also very nice um maybe this one because the light is nice on that one is the microphone okay i changed the position again let me know if there is too much popping sound too much breathing sound and then i can change that um okay we need to open affinity photo of course all right okay um hmm Hi Shari, thanks for joining from Wisconsin. No, uh, no worries about being late. That's completely okay. Uh, let me see. Let me set up here mm -mm -mm. my presets. 
4,000 seems a little bit large, but um, we can change that to 3,000 maybe. That should be good enough. Resize document. Yes, please. Okay, let's go to 3,000 here. Okay, we have a square format today. Uh, let's just... Oop, oop. What is going on? Let's just drag the stuff in here like so. And then... I was mostly interested in the stories and the visions of the artists. So that was really interesting on the Adobe Max conference. Really like creative people and what they do. Um, all right. There we go. Let's center it. Oh, let's, yeah, let's, let's put it like this. That, sounds, that seems good enough. Uh, sounds sound is fine but you're a bit transparent really um am i oh i am oh i'm a ooh, i'm a ghost <laughs> what is going on here uh is there how can i set this up this looks good here why is this transparent um i have no idea how that works crop no um wait a second maybe i should let me go here to this kind of hmm, logitech hub and there maybe i can set this up a little bit different let's make me a little bit brighter does it help no i look even worse why is it trans hmm Oops, sorry. No. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Sorry. I think you can see me well enough. Sorry that I'm kind of transparent. Not, I'm not sure what's going on. Maybe you mean this because this is my microphone here. I also look a little bit desaturated. I think we can, we can fix that though. Let's go to the filters here. No, there's no filters. What? Mm. I look fine here. Why is this different? Oh, now I look better. It's just like when I hold my hand in the camera. L let's just leave it like that. I don't know. Okay, uh, let's do some building here. Uh, let's, yeah, let's use this one. That looks good enough. Let me make this transparent. And then we put this in here. Mm, yeah, that's good. Okay, and then we can also recolor that. And uh, we can need to already flip that. Flippy flip. There we go. Mm, yeah, that looks good. Okay, then let's make a mask around that. I think I will just make a quick selection here like so. Or should we use the tool? Uh, it looks like this is good for the tool. Let's do the tool. There we go. All right. Okay. That's already pretty nice. Let's refine this a little bit. Good enough. Put a mask on that. Oh, and then we have to, of course, also brush this in on the top. So let me see where the head is going, like here. Mm. Oh, I haven't plugged in my thing today. I, I think I can still do that. One second. Mm. There we go. Does it work? Yes. Okay, perfect. Good. Uh, let's brush this out real quick. Let me zoom in a little bit. There we go. Okay, good. Make this visible again. Oh no. <laughs> I brushed on the wrong la uh, layer here. Assistant, thank you. Make this a little bit softer. Um, uh, 
It's also so interesting to see what other people around the world are doing and what they are talking about that, you know, what their opinions are, especially also where like different trends are going and stuff like that. For example, like these kind of surrealist um, surrealist composites. We could do something like that. I thought maybe I should do a video about that. Um, that could be fun. And I think my community would be into that. So, yeah. All right, there we go. Oh, that's already pretty scary. Wow. Okay, that's that's a lot darker than I thought uh, from the from the like how it feels. Oops, that's the wrong direction. Let's bring that stuff also in here like so. That is already pretty scary. Wow. Okay. Are you paid by Affinity? Uh, uh, no, not at all. I make my own money with my YouTube channel. I'm not paid by uh, Affinity. If I was paid by Affinity, I think I wouldn't talk about all the things I don't like about the software when some things don't work, right? So that, I think that's a pretty pretty obvious indicator that I'm not working for uh, for Serif. And also I'm not, I'm not making videos about all of their software, like not publisher, not designer. I only m do stuff about uh, Affinity Photo and then I say stuff like I don't like the developer persona because it's too bare bones and it's not good enough. So I use other software like uh, Photolab or Nick Collection or sometimes Lightroom. So yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not paid by them. One fifth of the size of the Adobe Photoshop in file. How is it almost equal to Photoshop? I just wonder how being one. One fifth of the size of the Adobe Photoshop in file size. You mean the software? Or do you mean like the Photoshop files? Let me know what you mean by that. Um, okay, let's see if we can do some. Let's make a mask here. I should have done that before. Let's delete that again and then make a curves mask here. And then let's see when we adjust this here a little bit. Mm hmm. All right. That already looks pretty good. Noise. I think that's, is that it? Should we do some more? No, no, mm, that might be it, right? Just a little bit more red. Let me play around with this. No, that's actually also not necessary. So this is basically it. Maybe a little bit more. That's pretty cool. Yeah, right. Wow, that was quick. Okay, cool. So now we can add some other scary stuff. Maybe we should do something about that thing here because that doesn't really look so good. It looks a little bit cheesy and cheap. Uh, what could we do there? Uh, to replace this, um, uh, maybe some glowing skull or something. The Photoshop is bulky in my system, the software. I don't know. I mean, Photoshop can do a lot more different things than a, 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 a Affinity Photo can. So it makes sense that it's bigger and it probably has uh, some more stuff included in that too. And I'm not sure about that, to be honest. And also uh, Affinity, like Photoshop is not just Photoshop. You also have, for example, Camera Raw, stuff like that as part of Photoshop. Um, but I don't know. Yeah. It's a different software. So, yeah. And of course, like uh, Photoshop has become like a, I wouldn't say a monster, but it has become really big, like King Kong, like like Godzilla. It's really like it's such a big software with they, they pushed in everything they could. I think they should like really like really maybe get some stuff out of there. You know, it's it's a little bit too much, um, to be honest. And this is why I think uh, Affinity Photo is the better software, because it's not that um, overloaded with stuff. It's it's less complicated. Right. So. Um, let me see here, light. Mm. Or oh, should we have another skull or something? Another skull that's in the hat? 
put a bowl of witch soup in her hand, but she's holding it like that. So that's that's quite a tea. Cup of tea, yeah, I like big cups. <laughs> I like big cups and I cannot lie. Mm. Mm. It's nothing better than having a ton of uh, coffee. We could also maybe just put a texture on there, make it look more interesting, or maybe we replace it with a nice, interesting uh, pumpkin. Let's go here for pumpkin. Pumpkin. Or maybe a hat, a hat of someone. Oh, this is nice. And then we make this here a little bit more scary and dark and dirty. Maybe you put some splotches on there or stuff like that. That could be interesting. I kind of like this one here. Maybe we could have some, some flames coming from that. Oh, by the way, we have the flames. I forgot about them. Let's put them also in here. Ooh, floating sky, uh, floating, floating hat. Let's see. Yeah, look at that. That's already cool. We don't want to have stuff in front of her face, though. But like this, kind of cool, right? There we go. That's already, well, maybe it's too much, but we can we can still play around with that. Hmm, maybe like this a little bit or maybe just like that. How about that? Yeah, just a little bit. It was a little bit too much before. We don't want to have too much stuff. Refractor it. Coat that's been built upon for so long can be bloated. That might also be um, a reason for that, right? I mean, it's really has been a long for uh, has been around for a really long time. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's save this. Um, let's call this witch skull. Let's go like this. Okay. Um, I feel like I want to try putting this into there. There we go. What I like about um, what they are doing is like at Adobe is that they are investing a lot into all that kind of 3D stuff. Like they, they bought some of the most amazing 3D companies. Um, and that that is, I mean, and, and also AI stuff, you know? And that is where, the, where basically the future is because of all the um, AI stuff, all the augmented stuff. Um, that is a very important part of of like creation in the future um and uh, you see like aug augmented things if you don't know what where augmented is used just think about all the filters you have on um on on tiktok or on snapchat or on these kinds of oh i did it the wrong way around uh we can i think we can let's just invert that no let's just redo that um, nope, that was the wrong one. Sorry. And that's a big, like, element of things. Of course, we don't have to do everything. Like, I, a friend of mine, she's a photographer, and she does analog photography still, right? And she's very popular with that. She's very, like, successful with analog photography. Um, so that's, you, you can, you can be successful in any kind of, with any kind of medium, right? But still, stuff is still progressing, right? Um... So, yeah. And of course, if you're in the area of digital things, which um, photo editing software is by nature, then these things become more uh, important probably, right? All right, there we go. Let's click on refine here. No, I'm on the wrong one. There we go. Boom. Okay. Uh, let's make a mask here. And then we want to make this a little bit smaller. I'm not going to refine this right now because we don't need to. Uh, look at that. That's kind of nicer, right? That looks better. Um, yeah, we want to adjust that a little bit. Maybe let's let's do this right now. I wish Affinity Photo had better R tools like Lock Alpha and a better bucket file system. What is a bucket file system? Can you explain that a little bit more? Um, yes, Adobe purchased Substance Painter, right? And they also have a software now um, that makes these kind of 3D um, photo stages, which is, I think, going to be a big future for photography um, because you can you can just change the set after you have done the photography uh, from from the materials, from the lighting, maybe also from the position, stuff like that. Uh, that that's a big part of that. 
and also I think we will see more of these kind of 3D object, 3D product presentations where you also need that kind of thing. So yeah, mm. maybe even with photography, right? Um, I can imagine that being the next ex extension that we have more um, 3D photography that's actually sitting in the place basically in front of you where you can look at the scene yeah, like you project the scene for example on the table in front of you and you can just look uh, from from different sides uh, we already have that with 360 photography which is nice but it's going in the wrong direction uh, because you want to look like around the corners and stuff right uh, so that's um, kind of an interesting development where things are going and future software can do that like you can already see on Facebook um, where they add a 3D space to 2D, 2D pictures, right? So that's, um, yeah, something really important, especially if you think about professional photography. Think about, for example, products like clothing. You want to see that like in 3D space so you have a better understanding of what is going on. I think we'll leave these things in on here. Okay, uh, let's make some adjustments here. So this is some really, really cool stuff going on. Um, yeah. Let me see. Yeah, I want to have this a little bit darker, so that's nice. Whoa, 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 whoa. Not like that. I feel like we probably want to have some smoke coming out of there on top. And I want to make this a little bit more grungy here. Okay, let me see. Let's go to Pixabay real quick. Pixabay. Mm. Grunch. This is easier done in a game engine like Unreal. What? What are we talking about? Uh, now I invested in Blender and they the fear is starting to hit the Blender community that they will lose this program. Adobe bought Blender? No, I don't think so. Did they? But it's open source. How can they buy something that's open source? You know a better bucket fill tool. Oh, a bucket fill tool. I know what you mean for coloring. Yeah. All right. If you do a lot of that stuff, um, maybe look into Krita, which I often suggest. Really good software for that kind of purpose. Uh, digital is, is specifically made for digital painting, and it has this... It has these tools that you need for digital painting, so that's good. And you, you can lock these kind of areas, and you can also fill uh, in things, uh, stuff like that. So that's that's a good software for that. Um, what, what are we going to do here? Multiply, right? No. color burn like that and then maybe work with some more contrast oh that looks good we just need to adjust that a little bit with an extra curve because it's a little bit too tasty um let's go like this Hmm. That's good. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, cool. Uh, maybe let me see if I reduce the opacity here a little bit. That's okay. That's pretty cool. I like that. A little bit dirtier, crunchier. Mm, maybe also reduce here the color a little bit of this. It's a little bit too um, saturated. Or we make everything more saturated. Let me try that first. Let me put this um, down here. Push up the saturation like so. Everything a little bit more goofy. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, okay, let's make this a little bit more saturated and then make it, ooh, oop, I didn't want to create a, uh, let's go back here, edges L like so, put this in here and then bring this back, yes. 
That's already a lot nicer. By the way, let me see if we can, when we adjust this a little bit, mm, actually, uh, maybe a tiny bit. That's better. Okay, cool. Right, so I was also thinking maybe some smoke coming out of the top there. Let's see, let's have a look at that. Um, Let's have some orange smoke. We can also change that. Mm, no, I want to just have that kind of smoke thing like this. Um, this is not too bad, but I think it's a little bit too small in the image. Um, Rahman says, wonderful composition. I'm showing your composition. Uh, do you have any weekly or daily routine? That is actually a good question. Um, let me see the other. Um, they are investing in it. Oh, interesting. Uh-huh, okay. Support a blender and invest. But that might be a good thing. Like if they if they pay funds for development or for artists or stuff like that so the community can grow, that might be an interesting thing. If they don't buy anything but rather invest in, in like development programs, that might be good. But I don't know. I, I don't have... I don't have knowledge about that, to be honest. Like, this is the first time I hear about that. Um, also, Krita has a gimmick uh, that even works with macOS now. Oh, cool. Wow, that's awesome. Really nice. They are like squid, which is spreading too far, too fast. Squid? You mean the 3D like uh, online page? Oh, or you mean the animal? Like there's this kind of, wasn't there this kind of 3D squid or something like this online platform where you can download all kinds of shapes and stuff? Um, let me see if there's some... Um, maybe we can use this. Depends on how big the resolution is. We, we can give it a quick try. If it doesn't work, it's no biggie. We can just try something else. Let's drag this in here and just see how good that works. Mm. I mean, we can use the top part maybe, you know? That might be interesting. So let's, um, let me see. Let's rasterize this. And then I want to make a selection here. Copy this stuff here out. Copy fill. Then we want to delete this. And then I'm going to work here with the blend ranges to remove that stuff. You can see here now it looks like this. That's already a little bit better. Mm, let's go like that. That's already pretty cool. And then we're going to um, rotate that. Let's go like this. Let's see. How does that look? When that comes out of here, can make a selection here and then inverse the selection and then apply that to the uh, to this object here. By the way, if you um, like some people say, oh, you're going too fast. It's not a tutorial. It's a, it's a live stream. So we are here like to for, like to socialize, to discuss, to have a good time. So it's not about um, me explaining as step by step what I'm doing. So just just to pointing that out, right? So people are not confused or um, disappointed when I'm going faster than I do in my tutorials. Okay, uh, let me see here. Oh yeah, the daily routine. Sorry, I forgot about that. I have the daily routine of being very lazy. <laughs> <laughs> which is just my own impression because a lot of people say I, I do a lot of stuff and I have an incredible amount of output, often a little bit too much. But um, yeah, for myself, I feel kind of lazy. But um, I don't know. I should make a video about that. It's kind of hard to describe because it's not the same um, on the different days, right? You know what? I think I will go like this and then I will... Um, oh, let me put the mask out of here. 
and then group this and then rasterize this so we have this as a transparent layer and then push this in again and now I can use that to make the selection um, a little bit smaller like so and then I can feather it a little bit like so and then I think I'm going the wrong way let's go invert was that a good idea I think I took a little bit too much away from that let's do this again one second um, I think yeah deselect whoops what happened oh there we go okay good let me um, daily routine let me think about that It's, it's, I mean, for me, it's certainly, inform, it's certainly uh, important to stay informed, to, to watch a lot of things of what people are doing. Um, and, and new th trends or things that are involving, but also that includes like um, reading books, for example, is important for me about all kinds of stuff that has to do with uh, what is going on in, in, in creativity and art and things like that. Um, to, because... I feel like if I don't do that, my brain gets dried up, you know, and it's it's harder, it's more complex to to think or to be like have creative thoughts. I feel like this is really bad here. Why does it look so bad? Um, should we just blur it? Maybe. You know what? I'm I'm gonna try something. Let me take this and then duplicate that and put both of them in a group, and then I put the mask on here, and now I make the lower one bigger like so and then blur it and then maybe we get a blurry edge oh that's no i thought it's gonna be looking a lot better but it doesn't um we sh should have used different smoke right ah <sighs> isn't it is it any client task? What? Again. Um, and yes, the NML, they did the same with Substance Painter first and then purchased it. Oh, okay. I see. Interesting. Use a smoke brush. That's actually a good idea. I don't think I have a smoke brush like that, though. Um, is it any client task or just for us? Client task, no problem at all. Not no, at least maintain a weekly routine with composition. Uh, mm, no, it's it's uh, just YouTube. Like um, I I built a channel from the start to to be a business, and then now it's like something I do full time. I have done for the last at least two years, or so, which is good because I like that model a lot more. I don't like to work for customers directly where uh, you pay me for my work directly. I don't feel so good about that because I have more freedom when I do it like this. And then also I like to give people the stuff for free that I'm creating most of the time. So this is why 90% of the stuff I'm doing is free. And then optionally, if you want, you can pay me for different products I create or support me uh, with um, donations or with a Patreon or stuff like that. Uh, to help me create better stuff and more stuff and to be there for the community more so that's a really important part about that um but yeah that's that's my main business basically right okay so this is kind of we can come to back uh, we can come back to that later by the way let me let me check something real quick i will go to free uh, i mean i pay them so as long as i pay for free pick i want to have some stuff from them let's see here smoke which is good i'm i'm ch i'm changing for in envato oh look at that why didn't i look here right away um i'm changing for envato as soon as this is running out because i want to try that too this is also nice okay i should have looked here right away first place anyways okay let's go um but for now it's pretty cool so i'm happy they have good stuff. They have good stuff on free pick. And of course, um, as long as you use it, it, as long as you use it for, did I delete the mask? Oh no, it's on there. Okay. 
as long as you use it for free, it's good anyways, right? It's it's free, so. Um, but uh, Envato has more stuff, so that's that's the big difference, I would say. There we go. Let me see. Hmm. Should we go like this? Should it go towards her or away from her? Let's see if we have this a little bit bigger, like so. When we have it like this, we can't see the hand so well. So I'm not 100% happy with that. Let's flip this real quick. I don't want to spend like too much time on that fog thing here. Oh, there's a graphic problem right now. All right, um, it's not going away. Come on, what's, <laughs> sorry. Is it crashing? No, it's not crashing. Come on, <sighs> clash with the rest of the picture. The green smoke, we can still recolor that. There seems to be a graphical error, you see? Through the picture from top to bottom. Did I do something with the mask? Maybe, no, is that the mask? Oh, is that the, that's the mask? What, what's going on right now? Sorry, I'm kind of... Okay, let's just delete the mask. I still want to see the hand, though. I'm not happy with this. Um... Should we just leave the smoke out? It was a funny idea, but maybe we don't need smoke here. Okay, let's forget about the smoke for now. Or maybe we can have it like big in the foreground, like so. Man, it was running so good and now it's kind of slowing down. <gasps> Ooh, we could have a, we could have a, what is it called, a collar or something? Collar, collar? Um, cauldron. How do you write that? Cauldron. Okay, there we go. Uh, we have a. We need a photo. Let's see if we have something nice here. Uh, with gold in it? No, that's not the idea. Um, and I want to add some more elements. Um, let's add some more elements. Ooh, look at this. That's cool. Okay. Um. Oh, my God. Got some cool stuff here. Okay. So we are back in business. Let's do that. Um. Ooh. Oh, we could have a hand in the foreground that's kind of blurry. Hmm. Interesting. Lots of options here. Let's close this. Do we have a version of this that's just black because there's too much stuff going on here? Uh, let's see. This guy doesn't have too many resources. There might be something better. Oh, we have some hands here. I I would like to have them on a black background, though. Ooh, ooh. Oh, okay. Hmm, one second. I think this is going to get really nice. Do we still have that? Yes. Okay. Let's play with this here real quick. I want to see how good that looks, if that works or not. Let's bring this in from over here and blend it. Can we blend that in a nice way? Hmm. I don't want to make a selection for all of the hands. That would be like a major pain in the butt. But maybe we, hmm, maybe it's not that difficult because the background is kind of uniform. 
And I think this could be rather cool, right? Okay. Mm. Let's make this bigger. And then let's open this up here. Where is it? There we go. Okay, let's be quick here. Make this bigger. Um, okay, there. And then in here and here and here and here and here. Okay, and then, oh, 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 oh subtract mode is actually okay this time. Why can't I edit now? God, I hate this. Okay. No. Let's go like this. One second. This shouldn't be too complicated. This is a little bit of a benefit, for example, in... in um, uh, oh, it's... Uh, um, uh, one second, almost there. Come on, why, why are you not picking up this arm here? There we go. I also want to have this here. Let's go to refine and see what we get from that. Okay. Yeah, that's good. I mean, it should be. No, it's not so good. Okay, let's click on apply here. <sighs> then create a mask. The mask is the wrong way. Let's invert that. Invert pixel selection, put a mask on that deselect give me a brush here and then I'm gonna do it the software can't I can one second there we go let's do this real quick here don't need to have the perfect hand shape let's invert here give me a little bit softer brush please there we go all right just fixing some parts here oh god we have these parts here too I think we are not going to be seeing that. That's okay. Let's brush parts of this in here. This is transparent, interestingly enough. There we go. Fixing this. So that's going quick. Masking is not good in Affinity. The latest updated Lightroom is far more intuitive, unfortunately. Yeah, because they are investing a lot in AI. You know, that's, that's, I mean, Serif has to get started with AI stuff. If they don't, they really are losing the train because everybody else does. Lightroom does, Luminar does. I'm not sure if Nick Collection does, to be honest. So maybe not everybody does, but that's the big thing. That's going to be like huge um, AI editing of photos, a recognition of shapes, of daytimes, of all kinds of things, right? It's such an important element, um, especially how with how fluid photography is becoming as a medium in our society. Um, it's just a must have. Which is another thing, by the way, I missed completely on the Zuckerberg Connect talk. That kind of thing. There we go. As you can see, we're fixing this rapidly here. Almost done. I think we can leave that. I feel like I should address this here, or maybe not. Yeah, let's just ignore that. Okay, cool. So there we go. Uh, let's make here um, flatten copy. Let's try that. Boom. Who? Huh? What happened? <gasps> Don't crash. There we go. Okay, good enough. 
Let's save this and then oh nice look at that we have some hands. By the way this is the this is the downside of free pick. Free pick does not have PNGs and that's really sad because you need them you need them so often for so many things. Uh, flip horizontal. Let's go like this here. Let's rotate that a little bit over here so it's not exactly the same. Maybe make these a little bit bigger. And then maybe, should we have some smaller hands here in the middle? I mean, it's kind of strange to have different hand sizes, but just for the sake of variation, we should maybe do that. Let's flip this over here. Boom, look at that. We have some hands coming up to it. That is already very spooky. I like it. Okay, cool. Uh, what kind of color should we give that? Should we make that blue or something? I feel like that should be kind of different maybe. <gasps> Ooh, I just thought about something. Wait a second. Let me give, uh, let me get another layer here. Let's duplicate this, bring that in the foreground like so, and then blur this. Mm, maybe like so. So we have some hands in the, oh my God. <laughs> that is pretty scary already, right? Um, okay, this hand is a little bit too much here. Mm. Let me raise the hand in the middle because I feel like this is too much repetition here right now. Let me get rid of this thing here. There we go. And then let's bring this in here like so. Wow, that looks awesome. I'm happy. Okay, cool. Um, what kind of color chest, man? Let's bring in a curve here for that. I feel like the foreground hands should maybe be a little bit brighter or not. Maybe more contrast, let's see. Push this, no, not push this up, push this down here. Okay, let's do some color adjustments here. Mm, yeah, let's have them in kind of a blue here. Maybe a little bit more spooky blue. Oh, 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 look at this. Okay, green. Mm. Yeah, I like it. Okay, pretty cool. Um, let me think for a second. We could use some, maybe some blood stuff on the fingers, right? Uh, maybe make a selection here or maybe just, let's just make a, let's just make a layer here, pixel layer, or maybe, yeah, let's have a selection with a mask on that like so. Boom. All right. Um, what's the chat saying? Big light and we have a scorpion concert. Big lighters? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's <laughs> that would be a good idea. Like if I that actually yes, that would be that would be uh, a nice idea. They have like a zombie uh, concert uh, with DJ and stuff. Um, yeah, I I should have thought about that. I didn't though. Okay, pretty cool. So that's a little bit too late, but that's pretty cool. By the way, we have these Frankenstein textures. He's a pretty uh, cool guy creating interesting stuff. Let's see if we can use that some way. Uh, let me let me have maybe, let's see a bright green here. Let me put this on here. How does that look? Nope. Mm. Ooh. We could have some green smoke in between. I would like to have some blood. Hmm. There is something here that looks like blood. Not really, right? Mm. Okay, let's go back here to our good old um, free pick blood. Blood's blotch. Flood's blotch, no blood. Hmm. 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 Stuff like that would be good, but then it has to be in the on the on the. Um, I mean, yes, maybe. Let me think for a second. How do we do that? We have some stuff here. There's some things. Let me open some of them, and maybe we put it just on some fingers. I also like green goo or something would be nice. Um, I feel like that's not so good. Is there more stuff here? Oh, there's more stuff. Okay. 
Um, maybe select this. That looks interesting here. Um, that's a EPS, but this also comes as a JPEG, so that's no problem. Mm. Okay, let's go with this. Let's not, no thinking, more doing. Okay, let's go. Uh, let's unpack this. Boom. There we go. Then we have the JPEG. I want to drag this right in here. Mm, there we go. Okay, let's save this real quick. Okay, so let me see what we do here with that. First of all, I need to remove, I guess I need to remove the background or we could do it as a, this kind of dark version maybe. Okay, um, let's make a new layer here. And then I need the clone brush, make this a little bit bigger. Then I want to source from here. I can't see anything. Mm, layers beneath. I'm not sure if this is working right now. Probably not. No, this is just copying the stuff from the top. Mm. Okay, let's do it differently. So here we have color burn. So let's set this to color burn. Color burn, yes. And then we set this to normal like so. That should be good. Um, and now I can't see what I'm doing. Let's rotate this, put it over here. And then I'm going to sample here again. Whoops, wrong tool. Sample. Um, no alignment, layers beneath. And now I should be able, oh yes. Okay, cool. Now I'm able to just paint this on here, as you can see. Mm. And then afterwards we have to kind of um, adjust that from the layer. Oh, wait a second. Um, normal? No. Multiply. Yes. Okay, good. There we should have some kind of blur thing. So we probably, mm, let's duplicate this layer here, duplicate, and then mm, select everything, delete it, and then just paint it on here a little bit. Okay, so that's done. Um, now we can hide this. Now we need a mask on that, like so. We have mask. Okay, so now it's only on the hands. And then here we have to have basically the same mask, right? Mm. So basically I can actually put this in a group. Let's do it like this. Put that in a group. Sorry, I need to look at the chat. I know, I know, I know. One second, let's blur this a little bit here. Well, the blurred ones are kind of stupid maybe. What is happening with them? They look kind of strange. Well, we can leave it like that. Okay, cool. And then the other ones here, I want to adjust them for how bright they are. And oh, this is not what I want. Mm. So that's not too bad. Maybe also some saturation. Where is that? Um, oh goodness, there we go. Yo, that's pretty cool. Okay, good. Uh, we have some problems here because we need to like, for example, here it shouldn't be on that part. Why is this not? Oh, 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 oh that's not good. Sorry. Mm, let's go like this. That's better. Mm. The rest is kind of okay. This one is wrong. And that one maybe too. Yes. Okay. Overall, I'm pretty happy with that. You see, we have some nice blood splotches on those. Okay, what else should we do here? I feel like these hands here in the foreground, where are they? Is this the blurred hand? No, this is the blurred hand. 
they need to be a little bit brighter than the rest. And then I'm going to look at the chat. Sorry, I'm kind of ignoring you guys right now. But I'm looking at you in one second. There we go. And then kind of, I kind of feel I want to desaturate them also a little bit. Vibrance, which is on here. Reduce the saturation on those. Okay, there we go. Let's see the chat now. Whew. All right. Um, oh. Let me save this. So let's make a little chat break here. What does the chat say? Uh, which concert? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, lighters? Uh, maybe iPhone shooting the Halloween concert. <laughs> that's that's kind of a cool idea. But we don't have a we don't have a concert situation right now, right? But an iPhone would be nice. It's a good idea. Uh, well, great job. I have to go. Oh, sorry to see you go. Okay, have a good night. Have a good Halloween night. Um, gradient color for the fingernails down in red. Down in red? What do you mean by that? You can use gradient color for their fingernails. Ah, okay. Um, you forgot to erase some parts of the fingers. They are still visible. Some parts of the fingers? What do you mean? Which part of the fingers? Lens flare, vignettes, and end titles. Some parts of the fingers? Oh, yeah. You're right. There are some parts of the fingers. Okay, awesome. Um, the big question is now what kind of layer is that? Uh, this layer. Okay, we have already found it. So we have to delete this here. Is there something else? There's some floating finger residue here uh all right um okay let me get a phone real quick smartphone smartphone and then we do that idea with the smartphone it's kind of funny mm. what, what are we going to use here this one mm. i feel like maybe at a little bit at an angle maybe like this one here Okay, let me open this up and then mm, this is maybe too much. <coughs> um, let me see that again. I mean, this is kind of, it goes the other direction. Ah, that might be good enough. Okay, let's download this. All right. Okay, that's <laughs> quick process here. Is this the phone? Yes, that's the phone. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so we need to make a selection here. Please give me a good selection. Oh, we also need to have a selection of the inside. One second here. Oh, mm. I'm gonna do it myself. Come on. This is annoying. Let's go up here. Okay, let's zoom out. Go here. And then let's go around these corners here. There we go. Are you, by the way, are you hyped for my Barcelona video where I have been like 72 hours to take photos? So that's kind of a challenge. This is why I set it up like that. Go to another city for a short time, try to take the best possible pictures and then edit them and make a video about that and then come back and present it to you. That was the concept behind that. So how? what do you think about that? Are you excited about that? Is it interesting or not? Or um, Because I definitely want to do more of these kind of travel photo adventures and show you how I take the photos uh, live on the street. Not live, but like filmed with a camera. Um, this one, the first one is a little bit like not too many camera tricks, which might be okay. We have to figure out kind of a style of what might be interesting there. Um, so yeah. But I really hope you're excited about that because this is something I absolutely want to do. It's really important for me myself too. 
Um, and I still want to figure out a little bit about the kind of the process of what kind of, you know, what kind of photography is it? Like, is it street photography or do I work with a model or um, what kind of thing are we going to do, right? Uh, so that's going to be the big question there um, in that regard. We kind of have to put it behind that finger, but other than that, I feel like if this hand is holding that a little bit like that, that should be good enough. I mean, it's a zombie after all, so that's good enough. <laughs> Thank you very much, Maurizio. I'm happy you like that. Uh, we still are going to add some more tricks here, of course. Uh, oh, we have the blood on top now. Mm, let me see what we are doing here. I think I will just isolate the layer of that hand if I find it. One second. Where's the phone? So let's put the phone out here and then let's isolate the layer, which I have to I have to hide the phone one second. OK. This is not it. This is not it. This is it. OK, cool. So here what we need is this thumb. So let me simply select that thumb. And then we put it on an extra layer just on top. So it's just sitting on top of the phone and that's that. Good. Because that's one of the major things I want to do is to bring more of my of my photo art basically to the channel and show you what I'm doing. And I have to figure out what kind of thing could be interesting, right? Uh, so, of course, I'm interested in a lot of different things, but the main question for me is... Um, uh, oh, there's this blot. Oh, the main question for me, basically, is... Oh, we... I didn't... I didn't... I didn't use the blood effect on that. Mm. Uh, we can we can also do that one second I will duplicate this real quick duplicate that and then rasterize that and then um, we have to put this like so there is oh there's not so much blood there anyways okay let's have a selection here then um, copy this to a separate layer delete that set this to color burn and now we have the blood also here in that finger so that has worked. Okay, now what we have to do is basically... Um, oh, there's the other blood on the finger. Why is there even more... What? Where's the phone? Oh, the phone is down here. Okay, so let's put this... Wait. Let's put this up here. Want to see that sort of content? Like the photo content, I really hope so. I really want to put more of that uh, onto the... I will wait to fill that content here off the phone until we have finished the scene because if I put it now and we do some color changes, um, it's going to be a huge problem. Uh, by the way, I also want to play around with an overlay here real quick. Where do I have my swatches? They are here. Okay, let's go. Let's set this to soft light and then... Oh, yes. Yes, look at that. Mythical gradients win again. That's always good. Boom. Are we done or what? Is it good enough? What do you think? I think like this is already pretty awesome. I'm not sure if we need to add more. I think, what, what's the stream time? One second. Yeah, one hour 20. Okay, that's good enough. So what we have to do here is we have to have a scene without the phone. No, wait. Yes, we have to have a scene without the phone. Okay, so I need to go here, Kobe flatten. Oh no, what am I doing? Uh, I need to, um, don't crash, not crashing. Okay, good. Mm, one second, there we go. So what I need to do here is to make uh, merge visible, like so. Now we have that. Um, yes, and now we put that into the phone. Okay, so first of all, we make that small. Then secondly, we need to have a selection inside of the phone. So this is the next step we need here. Let's go like this. 
Oh, that was quick. Okay, thank you very much. Um, let's make a mask here. Put that mask into a group like so, uh, like this. Boom. And then put that in here. So now this is the picture. Whoa, 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 whoa. What's happening? Ladies and gentlemen, one second. I have to lock this. Okay, so now we put this over here. And then for some reason there is no mask. Oh, now there is the mask. Okay, cool. Um, this is already kind of nice, but I want to have some perspective. Should I? Let's, let's try perspective. If perspective looks stupid, we're not going to use perspective. But I feel like I should try that a little bit. Yeah, that's actually better. Look at that. Beautiful. There we go. Look at that. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. You know what I'm missing about the perspective tool is that I can click in the middle and push it down. I want to just move the whole thing. Uh, and now I have to move all of the four points. Let's just keep it like that. I'm happy with that. But we need to do some more here. And that is that we... Um, need to mult, uh, have a second copy of that and then set this to screen, I guess. Yes. Um, have high contrast for that. Uh, let's go here for um, curves and then give me some more contrast on this. That's good. And then I want to also change the colors a little bit. No. Nope. I feel like more blue would be good. Mm. Uh, let's go like this. And then uh, let me let me just put your lens filter on that. I feel like mm. Like this should look a little bit different, but meh. Let's. That was actually not too bad. Mm, no, it's too. It's too. It's too samey. Okay, good. All right, I think we're done here. <laughs> That's it. I'm. I have to say, I'm pretty happy with that. I hope you're happy too. I'm kind of. I don't like this thing up here, so let's delete that. Uh, one second. Give me a sample of this here. And then maybe a new layer and then paint over this. Why do I not see my brush? Is there some blend mode here set up? Uh, no, it's normal. Oh, because the brush is not a brush. Okay, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a effect brush. Mm, let's make this soft here. Okay, that didn't work. Uh, one second. You know what? Just forget about that. Let's use the uh, in paint brush here. Boom, there we go. Okay, done. All right, that's it. We have our cool Halloween party here for, um, yeah, 2021, right? Crazy how time flies. There we go. <laughs> that was a really awesome idea with the, with the phone. Thank you very much for that. That's pretty cool. Okay, so we are done here. Let's go to the reviews of our uh, weekly challenge, right? I have to find that first, though. Let me close all of that stuff here. Close tabs. And then we go to Facebook. Boom. And to our Facebook. Let me maybe switch over here until I have found that. I hope you enjoyed that. Let me see where the chat is. There we go. Thank you for the iPhone. Yes, you're welcome. Uh, did you suggest the iPhone? Super Levy, I have learned so much today. That's awesome. That's always good. Thank you very much. That makes me happy when people learn something new and I can show you some interesting ways to do things. Ah, by the way, before we go, before we go, let me go back here real quick. So, like I said, let's again, sorry, I just want to... <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about the online course again because this is really important. Like you see me do these things on the fly and go like bam, bam, bam. And I, oh, you don't see the screen. Sorry. Oh, you you do see the screen. Sorry. Okay, there we go. Um, 
I go really quickly and I design these things and I bring them together and often there's good results, sometimes there's bad results. But the really important part here is I can do that because I have all that knowledge in the background and experience in the background. And this is what this new online course about the basics of composition is about because I know how to, I combine the colors, where to put the elements, how to bring everything together so it is cool. Of course, I'm also still learning i can get better there's people out there who do it much better than me but still the knowledge helps a lot that's really important to know that along the way this kind of understanding is good and then you perfect the techniques over time and also learn over time and also trends are changing over time but visual language basically stays the same because this visual language has been developed over not just hundreds of years but thousands of years literally because a lot of what we have as composition today as concepts today even for storytelling even for the different moods in stories and in colors and these kind of expressiveness in art comes from the ancient greeks from the ancient romans from a lot of ancient cultures right so this is t t uh, this is like knowledge that has evolved over a lot of time um, and it's not really changing that much because this is just how we function as the way we we see, the way we recognize the world, stuff like that, right? By the way, the very first part of the course, the very first video is about pre-conscious vision, which is really interesting, something new I also have learned in recent days. This is, by the way, actually vision. Uh, this is knowledge that I've brought to you directly from the Adobe Max conference where I've learned this about vision. I knew some stuff of that, but not all stuff of that so that was really really cool on how the eye works before we see the picture before we can react to it culturally emotionally um all these kind of elements does not have any influence on the pre-conscious vision because this is how the eye works on itself and how the brain works before we see the image how the brain is altering the image and this is really also interesting to learn and to understand because what we see is not what our eye is seeing. This is a this is a made up picture. The, the picture is made up by our brain. And this is really important for composition for the reason that um, we, we need to understand how we see and then how the, the picture is processed by our brain to be able to uh, basically guide the eye and reduce the picture to something that actually tells an interesting story. And that's the huge difference between the life we see every day and the art that is created to uh, to to wow you and to to bring you new interesting um, concepts and stories and ideas is to take all the amazing stuff and like really compress it and create something interesting from that right and and cut out all the things we don't need this is the most important part learning to cut out the things you don't need and then the the rest that's left over to arrange it in the most effective most interesting way to tell the story you want to tell and this is what this course is about the basics of that right okay let's go to our um lecture now whoop i don't have to change the screen just wanted to point that out by the way okay cool I've just bought the course. Basics. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much, Manuel. I hope you enjoy that a lot. I put a lot of time into that and I'm really happy with that. And I want to also do another course, not like soon, but in, in, in the future with advanced uh, concepts about composition. But I think the basics already help a lot. There's so much information there. Like I said, it's 28 videos where I talk about different things that make up composition, right? Uh, different different concepts of composition. All right, there we go. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting so excited about that stuff. I really love to talk about theory. Okay, anyways. So here we have the first one by Joanna. Let's pull this up here and then also have this here in a second uh, window. So she says, here's mine. This is a pumpkin eating an apple. Oh yeah, the apple is down there. I carved it myself and took the photo. Wow, pretty cool. Awesome. Um, the photo was low quality, sized uh, down from Facebook, so it's not very sharp. I added background rain, lighting effects. Um, oh, okay, Olivia's line of light. Okay, pretty cool. Really cool. Very, very nice. So um, this is the original picture. Nice carving with the teeth here and the holes in the nose. And there you have your apple. Also very nice. Really cool. By the way, here's a little trick. Um, if you don't have a tripod with you uh, to, to arrange your camera, what you can do is take a jacket, for example, that you wear 
and then uh, just uh, make a ball of that and sit the camera inside of that ball because then you can angle the camera in certain ways. So that's very helpful. And then set it on a timer, maybe three seconds, maybe five seconds, and then push the button and let the camera do its thing because then the camera is not moving after you press the, uh, what is it called, the, the, the photo button. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I have no idea what the button is called in English. Um, in German, it's called the Auslöser. Yeah, t typical German uh, st strict word, the Auslöser. Um, the release, yes, release is the, is the, is it release? I don't know. Anyways. Mm. Okay, let's talk about the editing. So the editing is pretty cool. Um, really like how you made some glowing light here. It really looks nice from the eyes. I like the dark background, makes everything more spooky. The one thing I don't like too much is that the apple is very dark down here. So you should have made that in editing a little bit more bright um, and uh, maybe give it a different color, like a green apple, stuff like that. Um, so yet you can actually see the apple and also maybe put some of that glowing light into the eyes and the mouth of the apple because you can see here it has also been carved a little bit um, so to just make that more visible because right now it's not really um, you can't really see it another thing you could have done with the carving maybe is to cut the apple or let me maybe bite the apple yourself and then put it into the mouth so we see a little bit of bite marks because right now it looks like it's in the back side it's like a whole untouched apple um, with a face in front but other than that I really like the, the editing it's pretty cool like you said it's it's like a little bit blurry and low resolution but don't worry it's, it's still a cool edit um, Auslöser? Auslöser? Did I say Auslöser? No Auslöser maybe I said Auslöser <laughs> <laughs> okay wow next one is by diana let's open this up let's go here uh so what do we have here keeping it simple with only two pictures that match quite well a pumpkin who scares a mummy oh 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 okay 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 so here we have the mummy in the background which actually looks scared so that's pretty nice and is holding the pumpkin i guess here with these Many, many fingers. What's going on here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight fingers. Holding with maybe with two hands. I'm not quite sure what's going on here. Um oh with mm -hmm. oh this is actually three hands around the around that um uh uh a glowing ball. I, I don't I'm like like crystal ball, whatever. I don't find the right word for that. I like the concept and how you combined it. And it's really a very good idea that you have a light source in the original picture. This is also what you do in, 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 in the professional area where they don't just simulate light afterwards. They have some light sources beforewards and then they can enhance them and adjust them and stuff like that. So if you want to have something that glows, put some light there in the first place and then you can replace that glowing thing with something that you want to be the glowing object like it has been done here where we have this light as you can see down here you can see that yes you can see that and then it's replaced by the pumpkin so that's actually a pretty good idea um maybe i would have made the um the skull here in the background a little bit brighter because it kind of um fades into the background i i myself am also uh how do you say guilty of making pictures very often much too dark but um yeah if you if you would make the face a little bit brighter you can see that scariness um of the of the of the mummy um so yeah Right now, it's it's more like a background thing, and if it's it's a it's a vital part of the story, it should be a little bit more visible, um, in that regard. If it's very important for the story, it should probably should be either the same brightness as the pumpkin, or even a little bit brighter than the pumpkin, so you look there first. Um, yeah, and maybe some other element also in there, maybe some different colored eyes or something, green colored eyes or something like that, you know, to to really attract the attention. But um, as it is, it's pretty cool. Really like the edit and also a good idea on replacing an actual light with a digital or like a, another object that you edit afterwards, right? I only wrote this to avoid confusion. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mimon. 
All right, let's go to the next one. <laughs> this is from Ian, the 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 sad wood owl. Um, so we have uh, two different pictures here. That is very scary, I have to say. Um, yeah, very, very um, strange. Um, so our bushland is always spooky enough without pumpkins. Yeah, that's true. That's really interesting. And then you put these eyes in here. Um, so you use liquify to put the eyes in the right shape. Uh, the, the important thing about liquify is that you use it very softly and just a little bit and push things very slow. If you go too fast, uh, you get these kind of disturbances as here, as you can see here. And then you try to push it back, but it doesn't quite work. And then everything is kind of flowing out of shape. Maybe that was the idea here. Maybe we wanted to, you wanted to have these kind of gooey flowing eyes, a little bit surrealist, a little bit like Dali style. Um, but if you didn't um, try to uh, use the use the liquify tool very softly, just a little bit, um, reduce the the strength that it has, and then little by little move them, uh, move the pixels over. But overall, it looks pretty cool. Um, the the oh god, how do you say uh, the 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 peak the beak the beak the beak of the bird is um, kind of is very transparent here. Um, barely visible so I understand why you put it there so it looks more like a bird but at the same time it's kind of there and not there so that's a little bit I, I'm not sure about that maybe it would have been better to leave that out or maybe to have something else maybe have some teeth in there or something like if you have like a like actual open mouth with teeth I think that would be very scary then as a picture um, so that's pretty cool what I'm not so much a fan of is that you have uh, like completely removed the background so everything is black here and then you made this um, artificial looking uh, like a wood uh, frame around that and another frame around that and that kind of puts it in a very com uh, like controlled environment and it looks like it's it's like a picture in a gallery rather than a scary um like a scary situation. So probably I think I would have kept the original picture like this, maybe have make everything a little bit more night or blue hour, a little bit darker, and then have more of these um, owl eyes in in here like you did, uh, but maybe make them a little bit more glowing. That, that's just me, you can do it differently. Uh, I'm just saying that the frame is taking a bit away from the scariness um, of the overall situation, because as it is here, that already looks pretty scary, right? And then if you add some eyes to that, um, I think that would be that would be nice. Um, and and leave it in that because then you still have that kind of feeling of there is like like how do you say uh, 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 the 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 trees and the forest are watching you. This kind of situation that's more scary, right? Okay, let's go on. Thank thank you very much, Ian. Let's go on to the next one uh, from Ernst. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Interesting combination. Halloween is coming soon. Pumpkins are from Ansp. There's pumpkins. Oh yeah, down there is pumpkins. Okay, cool. Uh, picture from Pixabay. Uh, for the, have fun with you. Okay, cool. Um, it's interesting, and this is also a style you can do where you just bash different pictures together and then um, create. Like this is more like this kind of sur surrealist thing. I, I think I want to make a video about that kind of soon, uh, maybe in, in two or three weeks or something like that um, with these kind of combinations. Because you can see here, uh, we have all kinds of elements here uh, meshed together. Like there's a, there's a giant skull here in the background and then there's a girl looking out of the window and we have here, like there's a lot of stuff going on. It looks a little bit like these, these um, are they called wiggle pictures? I think where you have a lot of stuff in there. By the way, this is that is a this is a own art form. Are they called wiggle pictures? I hope there's not some kind of no. Wait a second. Uh no. What what are they called? Puzzle picture no. Let me search for that real quick. No. Mm. 
Do you know what I mean? Where you have these pictures where so many things are going on. Um, Mm, what are they called? Um, yeah, kind of like this here. No, not really. Um, they they have like they have these pictures that are filled with so many things, and then you have to search in between these like tons and tons of things. Uh, in the picture to find the the kind of thing they want you to look for but i can't find one right now i'm sorry um it's kind of like this not not really like this um maybe you know what i mean and they are like a they are real like a really kind of strange and unique style if you know what i mean um write it in the write it in the in the chat please Anyways, pretty cool. It's very dark though, so it's kind of hard to see the elements. I can see it on my screen. I'm not sure if you can see it in the stream very well because the stream is sometimes a little bit darker. Um, some of the elements are not so well integrated, like you have this kind of orc down here. He's a little bit too bright in the colors uh, compared to all of the other colors. And also you have this, um, I can't remember the name of the bird. Um, it's also a little bit too colorful um, for that. Like you can see he's very blue compared to all of the rest, which is more like um, toned down colors. Wimmelbild. Yeah, that's the, that's the, that's the, uh, that is the German name for that. Mm, do I find something like that? Maybe like this. Oh, yeah, 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 like this, like this. Look at that. Look at this. These kind of images. They. I feel like there's a lot of games like that, and they are just filled with stuff, and you have to, like, click around and find some kind of thing. I've never played it myself, uh, but I've watched videos about that. And that I kind of like the images because they are so strange and at the same time kind of nice from the style. I don't know what is nice about them, but they are kind of nice from the style. Anyways, let's go on here. Um, so uh, thank you very much, Ernst. Pretty cool. Really like that. Oh, there's an other oh, Ernst has. Oh, this is just a this is just a post uh, to wish everybody a nice Halloween. So thank you very much for that, Ernst. Pretty cool. Um, Russell has created some magic again. Let's see what he's saying. Another cartoon video game style composite cut out of window and door and the house and put them uh, on the pumpkin, added flowers and lamp chimney. <laughs> okay, okay. A vineyard and use a number of blend modes. Okay, pretty cool. That looks really good. That looks amazingly well put together. Very, very nice. How did you find all these elements that fit so well from the style also? That is very impressive. Look at that. All these kind of prisms, like a landscape and a pumpkin and all these kind of things here. Even the bridge and the light, everything comes from different pictures. Look at here. This is this is what he put down there. That is very impressive. Did it take a long time to find them? Because I find this is one of the hardest parts for me to find images that fit together well when I want to create something more elaborate. Um, by the way, where did this house go here? I can't see it anywhere. Maybe you wanted to use it, but then didn't. Uh, but the rest is really impressive. Very, very interesting. Really cool. All right. That is very, very nice. Also from the mood, from all the colors, how they come together is really cool. Also the composition is very nice. You see uh, all the things like you have most of the attention here in that area. Um, and it's kind of uh, guarded off on the side by these darker elements. So that's pretty, pretty cool. Very nice. I'm very impressed by that. Thank you very much, Russell. Really cool. Very much enjoy that. Okay, cool. Hidden object games. Maybe. I'm not sure what they are called in English. All right, let's go on. This is one of the strangest by Chris. I don't know what's going on here. Um, so this is made with his own picture with a diving tank with a submarine. Added two stock photos with pixels and cut out uh, the pumpkin face 
and two divers. You can see here in the background there's two divers. They, they more look like a little bit like a painting on the wall because they are so transparent. But I mean, I get, I kind of, I think what you're doing here is you built like uh, out of paper mache, like a submarine, or is it like, did you, did you build one out of metal and you put it in your pool? Uh, like is it or like a, out of plastic is this a model that can actually drive or is it like is it something that you use because you do like stop motion films or stuff like that I'm a bit confused what that is and what the size of this submarine is um, could be it could be like it could be two three meters long or it could be just like like this big you know I have no idea um, one uh, but when we look at the photo editing um it's like, why didn't you put more atmosphere in here? You know, um, there's like, it like you you. It, it, I don't think it's it's too difficult to to like recolor it and make it a little bit darker and change the light situation so this actually feels like underwater and a little bit more spooky because it's kind of you can see is is it's basically sitting there like in the other picture and then you added some some lights here. But there's no no light shining out of the window, so a little bit of glow would also be good from the windows. And this uh, the 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 face is also like on sideways, so maybe it would have been better to put it on uh, in in a frontal way, or maybe even replace that frontal part here with a pumpkin because the pumpkin is round anyway, and just like remove that stuff, and then have a have a pumpkin face that's maybe even open, but it's just a fantasy, so it doesn't doesn't have to work underwater 100%, right? Um, and maybe put everything like put your cut your submarine out and put it into an underwater photo that you find or maybe a drawing of an underwater scene stuff like that um, to to make everything more um, real. Of course, like it's all all part is all question of the of the skill level. Maybe you didn't know how to do that. Uh, so for for a beginner attempt it's interesting but there is a lot more that could be done also like i said the divers in the background they look very flat and transparent so this is also something where you want to maybe cut them out like with a selection and then if you would have a if you would put everything in a on a background of an underwater photo you find it's so much easier to cut out the divers and just put them in because then they are already in water and it feels more natural that they float them rather than blending them with the background because then you get this transparent effect here and i don't know what this is it, it, it seems like a light beam but i'm not quite sure why there's a light beam coming from the submarines there's a, a lot of things that could be done different to be honest the door and window comes from the castle Oh, okay, interesting. Oh, wow, about three hours. About three hours to create the composition or to find the pictures for the composition? I guess to create the composition, right? That's always the thing, right? It, it looks like, okay, just put some elements together, but in reality, it is a lot of work. And if you want to do it really nice and create a really nice work, it's just hours that you invest in creating that. And this is also why in the past, I really enjoyed streaming for four or five or six hours because then I really had a lot of time uh, to, to really put into that while now I have to make it as quick as possible um, to, to fit into one hour or less. Uh, but still, it's, it's kind of okay. I, I would like the longer process, but... Oh, by the way, I also need to point out next month, I'm only going to stream every second Sunday. So in the first week, I'm putting the challenge of the week and then you have two weeks time. And then at the end of the second week, I'm going to make the stream. So I'm not going to stream every Sunday. I'm going to stream every second Sunday. And also the challenge of the week is going to be every second week, like the first week challenge second week stream third week challenge fourth week stream um because it would have been kind of strange if i make a weekly challenge but don't review the pictures right this is why i decided to not only change the stream but also the, the challenge i hope that's okay with you all right there we go um Ah, for all of it. Three hours for all of it. Okay, pretty cool. So uh, the last one was from Chris. Thank you very much for that. Um, I hope you can do something with the feedback I gave you. Um, all right, let's go for the next one here. Oh, nice. Okay, so we have a lot of pictures here. We have a graveyard. 
Um, oh, <laughs> there, there's the picture. We've seen that picture today with the skull. Okay, let's have a look here. Oh, there's a big, 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 um, a big pumpkin here in the background. Are the birds in the original? No. Oh, you added the birds too. So the birds are very nice. Uh, that worked really well. Then uh, for the rest of the pumpkins, I know how you wanted to add them. I would invite you to watch my last stream where I added pumpkins to this kind of graveyard scene because these are, I think you kind of blended them with the background or at least you made them kind of very dark. Like from the ambient light, not too bad, but they look a little bit transparent. And then also there is the, the glow of the eye also is, is, is very much reduced. So when you blend it with the background, um, make another layer on top of that and then add the, the glowing of the eyes if you want to have this kind of spooky glowing in there. Um, yeah, and then also, of course, you have to paint a little bit of shine onto the hat where, where the light is coming out. Uh, so you just don't have glow from the eyes and the rest of the pumpkin is dark. So you have to uh, like take into consideration how how bright the pumpkin is if he has light coming from the pumpkin, right? Uh, this one here is a little bit better, but the glow around it is too white and too soft, like not white with color, but white from the range uh, and too soft and, and too um, like too much blended with the background, if you know what I mean. You know, it just it just looks like a color change in that area rather than a shine, uh, shining light. Of course, in this case here, it's a little bit difficult, maybe. O although you have, um, you do have like flat surfaces. So uh, the the technique I'm using there is, for example, what you can do is to use a a curve adjustment and then make it very bright and adjust the colors for this kind of orange light you want to have and then invert the mask on that curve layer and start to paint it in with a brush. Uh, so you paint basically that brightness you created um, onto the surface where there should be more brightness in the in the image. And then, um, oh, there's actually the skull here on that on that pumpkin. And like that, you can paint light. But that's difficult. You need a little bit of experience or like actually a lot of experience for that to make it good. But it's always better to get started and do it wrong at the beginning rather than uh, not getting started at all, right? Um, the pumpkin in the background is nice, the huge pumpkin, but I would say a little bit not really necessary for the picture. And also I would have made the pumpkin more crisp and then use a... Um, a smoke, uh, sorry, um, a fog brush and and like paint over that. Uh, so you you see the details, but they are coming through the fog, right? Rather than making it kind of, it looks like it's it's transparent, like very transparent in the background, rather than being behind fog. All right. Um, might be longer. You don't notice the time when you're involved in the work. <laughs> It might be long. Yeah, that's true. It often is longer. Uh, in recent streams, we have like streamed for three hours. So I have probably worked for two hours at least on the pictures. Uh, but yeah, sometimes it needs time, right? And by the way, I also thought on, on when I make less uh, streams, I, I make them a little bit like I make them three hours long instead of two hours long. So I don't have to rush myself too much. And we can like just have nicer results more interesting results and i think if it's just every two weeks it's more of a special occasion it's more interesting something more yes yeah, some, just something more special where we can even also share a little bit more time together okay that's interesting here said so this is very different so you have a pumpkin and there's people having a party inside of the pumpkin that's really interesting okay so we have here the photo of the pumpkin and then we have here the scene of the people dancing. All right. That's actually a really cool idea. Um, I would have made the uh, image, I uh, like the, sorry, not the image, the, the colors in the, uh, of the dancing scene brighter in the background maybe and also warmer like you when you look inside of a room, right, from the outside. Um so you have this kind of bright, um, warm, inviting scene inside of the pumpkin, for example, and then maybe make it a little bit darker blue 
uh, like night blue on the outside so you have a little bit of a contrast between the the warm um, colors it, warm inviting colors inside where the party is going on and then the cooler darker uninviting colors on the outside and this also focuses more attention than on the people um, uh, that having that are having a party here because I mean you can see them well right now but at the same time they are kind of having the same color as everything else in the picture like the pumpkin has the same orange and the the foreground grass has the same orange so there's a lot of the same values going on a little bit more separation and uh, orange and blue are nice contrasting colors I think that would help a lot all right, let's go on here to the next one. How many more do we have? Oh, not too many. Okay, that's good. So the next one is by Niels. There we go. That looks pretty cool. Niels is another one of our really skilled um, community members. There we go. Woo. Okay, nice combination here. Lots of stuff going on though. A little bit too much maybe. So here we have all of the elements. Very nice spooky background. And we have these little mountains here of pumpkins. And this kind of ghost body, I would say, and a gravestone over here. So that's pretty cool. Um, that's actually, it's nice. Some, I have to say, in this case, some elements are not so great. Um, for example, this kind of flying ghost here is, and when you see here from the colors and from the values, from this kind of ambient light, is, is not um, uh, like adjusted in that way. The rest I feel like is adjusted uh, to fit the background. And as you, when you compare here, although this background actually has this green already, um, but this kind of green here and that kind of green here and that kind of green here, they fit together. They could be tuned a little bit finer. Uh, like this green here is more intense from the color. When you look here on the, on the green, on the, on the skull and stuff, it's more saturated than the background which is different from being brighter um so it feels like it's a little bit different of a green but this uh like floating ghost here in the middle he has none of that ambient light on him and also has these kind of bright um areas uh, on here which should be adjusted a little bit differently um, of course you want to have him uh, still visible you could move in a little bit more to the right maybe um so he is uh, on the bright background on the bright forest uh, so you can see his out uh, like outline a little bit better uh, although with the with the two arms and such you can actually see the form pretty well it's very nice so that's pretty cool um also maybe would be good if this kind of i like the glow down here from that kind of pumpkin and this is contrasting with the like um desaturated colors of the rest of the scene and then you have these more saturated glows from the eyes that would be also nice here in that area of the eyes and the mouth because they feel like there's a hint of glow in there but it's not really there um, uh, you see like it's it's kind of a uh, colorful in the middle and then it's for some reason getting desaturated on the outside um, of the eyes that's a little bit strange so to just copy this over here this kind of glow that I think would be good and also to, to create some more similarity between these two elements all right well, let's go on to the next one here uh, by the way I, I have to find the time uh, maybe I, I will do that next week to add more people to this hall of fame part of my website I started that and then I had so much work in recent week that I couldn't add anything more but I really want to add more pictures uh, for uh, the other challenges we have had so far okay this is from Sabina I use photos from the Benny challenge really oh interesting did he like which kind of pictures did he take his own photos and upload them maybe the houses here is that like the graveyard and the house here? Is that the pictures that he uploaded? Or did he link pictures like uh, I sometimes do from Unsplash? Um, the baggage said, I always find my stuff is better when it gets when I get lost in it and I'm not clock watching. It's not often I get that amount of time though. Ah, we can talk about it in a second. Let me do the, the review here real quick. How many more pictures do we have? Oh, still like three pictures okay that's good um about like getting into the flow there was a really amazing talk on um, uh, the adobe next conference about getting into the flow we should talk about that in a second let me finish here real quick the uh, the reviews 
So, mm, it's it's nice. I think I know what you wanted to do, but at the same time, there's like the elements don't really come together. Like the there's some problems. Like I like the atmosphere and the colors are there, and and you blended it nicely from the ambient light. That's pretty cool. And these desaturated colors also nice. Not every Halloween picture has to be super like colorful and bright, um, but the perspectives of these two pictures don't quite fit together and also when you look here at these pumpkins in the foreground you can see that the ground of the pumpkins is going like this um, so flat towards the camera and then the ground that we have for these two buildings is, is going a little bit feels like you you can see like the the, the these two buildings they feel like they are leaning backwards right um, so that is a little bit of a problem. You need um, to adjust that with the perspective tool to just bring that into the right perspective, skew them in a way that they look straight again and, and not like fall over backwards because of the different perspective. Um, I like the mountain in the background. I feel like the ghost here could use a little bit maybe more brightness so you see it better. On the other hand, you could want to have this as kind of a hidden detail that only people see who pay more close attention to your work, which is also good. You don't have to make everything super obvious in your pictures. Um, so you could go either way with that, right? Um, so yeah, but overall, it's, it's a pretty nice uh, work. I really like how you set everything up in the scene and this kind of graveyard and the houses around that. Only the kind of perspective that's leaning outwards is not so great. Um, you might want to fix that. Otherwise, pretty cool. I'm, I'm, I really like that, right? Um, by the way, if you want to have more attention to that ghost, you can, for example, move that part of the background more maybe over here so we have a brighter part maybe in that area mm, you want to play around with that a little bit because the, the ghost already is also bright and the mountain is bright so mm, eh, maybe not you, you have to play around with that it's really sometimes you just like need to figure out how to how to place these things um yeah okay anyways there we go so thank you very much for that sabina really cool work let's the next one is from shari there we go. Okay. Boom. Oh, interesting. Okay. Again, some blending problems and some problems with visibility or let's say readability of the image. This is the different elements we have here. This sitting um, a skeleton here. We have a wolf down here. There's a hint that I haven't seen in the image and some other interesting elements, a spider web with a spider also. I can't see that either. Not sure where that is. The hand is up here. That's pretty cool. Nice little detail. Again, kind of hidden details. That's nice. I like how the skeleton is sitting here on this porch. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then you have some elements that are not so well integrated. Like this. Um, um, what is the what is the what is the name of that um, bird? Um, the crow. The crow looks pretty transparent, so maybe make that more black, so so it's it just looks transparent, right? Then you have this hat here, and you can see here the saturation on this. Uh, it's like the colors are more like comic style colors; they don't fit so well to the rest of the picture. And also this here in front with the flames, maybe these are illustrator, like the, like 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 vector drawn hand drawn flames rather than actual flames and because the rest of that is a photo or made from photos it looks kind of strange that suddenly you have drawn flames in there and again they have this kind of more color uh, ring from what you would find in a, in a comic uh, illustration stuff like that so maybe a little bit more realistic flames would be good for that um, to have that in here and the wolf here on the side is very hidden He's, he's very dark in there, very much blending with the background. So you might want to figure out a way to make him more visible. An idea could be, for example, to put some fog behind him. So there's a little bit of a brighter background behind that wolf. And then you have him more visible, stuff like that. Or, I don't know, for example, a rim light could be good. 
I don't know where the rim light in this case would be coming from, but for example, if you have the flame from the burning pumpkin, you can have some orange light here on the outer edges of your wolf. And then because of these edges, you make the wolf more visible. So that could be a possibility. Other than that, it's, it's a cool idea. I think a little bit too many elements. Um, uh, it, it could have worked with less elements in here. Uh, also, by the way, the, the burning pumpkin doesn't shed any light on the ground or anywhere else in the scene. So that's also a thing, a reason why the pumpkin looks kind of out of place in there. Um, yeah, other than that, pretty cool. Very nice. All right, let's go on here. What do we have here? Two more. This is from Tony. <laughs> what is going on here? Having a bit of fun with this challenge using Affinity Photo Pixels. Just a simple mask added in pix in added a pixel layer. Okay, interesting. What I really like about that is that you also change the color of the skin here on the neck and here on the arm, so that uh, it's not just a mask of a pumpkin that the whole person is turned basically into a pumpkin person. So that's pretty cool. Um, I would suggest to maybe, I mean, the light is coming kind of from the right direction, but um, maybe skewing the pumpkin a little bit because he's kind of, he looks like he's plopping out of the, of the lower part of that, of that wool hat here, you see, because you can see the shape here, it's going like this. And then suddenly this is bulging out on both sides of that. So uh, taking, for example, the liquify tool and just taking this part and pushing it inwards uh, softly a little bit more. And uh, so it has more of kind of a hat shape that would be good. Um, yeah, but other than that, I feel like it works pretty well. It's pretty cool, very nice. The selection here is also a little bit, like you can see there's a dark line here that makes it look more selected. So maybe fix that a little bit clean that up a little bit more um yeah and then just adjust the shape a little bit better and then i feel like that is actually pretty cool it's pretty nice all right let's go on to the last one this is by mick what has mick done oh cool uh what okay just a quick edit as i've not had much time that's okay oh okay now i can see it i was kind of surprised like this picture and then you have this elephant here and then you made this from it with these kind of smoke uh, uh glowing smoke coming off of the hat in the background which is nice and then you have this eye in here this elephant eye that's pretty nice personally i would have probably made the eye a little bit brighter um or maybe give it a little bit more detail maybe a little bit more sharpness stuff like that or more more clarity so you have a bit more contrast in the eye because it's kind of you only see it when you open the picture and actually look at it you can see here in the small preview the eye is not visible because when you when the image is smaller you lose on color and lose on contrast and then these small details basically get lost so if, if you want to show it online and you have these small previews you want to put a bit more um, brightness here on these eyes. I think there's also a second eye over here uh, that is even on the big version, not really visible. So a little bit more, a little bit brighter. I feel like that would be good. Um, and of course, if you want to grab a lot more attention, giving the color different, uh, giving the eye different color, of course, would do the trick. Like for example, making the eye, uh, uh, I don't know, green or blue or red or stuff like that. But then it's probably becoming a little bit more goofy. Uh, you might not want that. So mm, really depends. I like this kind of monocolor, mono monochromatic image here. Just one color is still pretty cool. Very, very nice. Really like that. Thank you very much, Nick. Uh, Mick, sorry. All right. Awesome. Pretty cool. So these are the entries for this week. Let's talk a little bit about the, the flow. <laughs> what did you say? The... Um, uh, Longer notice mm -hmm, involved. No, what was that? Oh, the, the 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 stuff is getting better when you get lost in it and forget about the time. He makes challenges to use all these photos. Oh, so he suggested all these photos and then you have to use them together. That's interesting. Let me put the chat over here. Okay, pretty interesting. 
Ah, uh, yeah. So um, talking about the, the, the flow, that was a really interesting lecture. Uh, I want to give you some key points of that if you're interested. And so, I mean, some a lot of that is really obvious, but still um, often I feel like you have things in your mind and then you need someone else maybe also with more experience to clarify it for you and just spell it out or, or spell it out in words and say, okay, this is how to do it. Even if you already knew that's the way to do it. And then it becomes a lot more clear, at least that's my impression, how for me that experience was. And uh, basically the, 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 um, how do you say, uh, um, well, the, the, the most important part of the lecture was to say when you want to have to get in the flow, what they found out from research is that um, first of all, it's important that you do something where you feel yourself that is rewarding. So you're having a good time with that. So you can get lost in that. It's really hard to get lost in something that you don't like, that you don't enjoy. So um, think about something that you like doing. And you can like break it down and just make one part of that because if sometimes if the process is too big, we feel like pressed down by the process. So just pick one part of the process that you enjoy doing. For example, you can say, okay, today I'm just sitting down. I'm going to select pictures. I'm not going to work on the composite. I'm not going to work on uh, all these other details and stuff, blah. I'm just going to select pictures. I turn on some nice music. I make me a cup of tea and then I'm sitting here for an hour and I'm just going to select cool pictures that I might think could be cool for that composition, right? And so you have a positive task that you enjoy. And then um, the next part of that is that you have also um, a focused outcome where you say, okay, this is what I want to reach. Because if you have more of a goal, you can focus easier in something. This was also something that was interesting to me that you're not just going into a situation expecting to just like get into the flow. Um, you have to break it down and have something where you say, yeah, I like to do that and I know what I want to achieve. And then you can just let loose because um, the, Im the important thing of letting loose is that your brain doesn't have to think anymore about what is going on and where to go and, and trying to answer all these kind of puzzling questions. You, you are set on a, on, a, on a rail like a train and then you can just go. And that's actually a really good concept. And then, of course, um, the, the more classic concepts where you say uh, turn off all the kinds of distractions like turn off your phone and, and uh, other things that might distract you at that moment and just like give you the time uh, to relax. And what I really also found very interesting about that lecture is that uh, he says from the research, what they found is that you take about 10 to 15 minutes to get into the flow. That was really interesting. And then if you are disturbed from the flow, if you disturb yourself or someone else disturbs you, you take 25 minutes to get back into the flow if you even manage to get back into the flow. And this, I find, is a really good incentive to say, no, I'm not letting myself disturb. Because um, for me in the past, it was normal that like, for example, a friend says, hey, let's drink a coffee. And I say, OK, let's we I can drink a coffee like 20 minutes and then I go back and do my work. Or my mother calls and say, hey, do you want to come by uh, to talk a little bit and say, OK, let's I, I come by half an hour, one hour, then I go back to my work. But knowing that it takes so much more effort to get back into your flow rather than the first time getting into it really makes it more useful that you say, OK, I'm going to take me some time where I know I can work maybe one two three hours as a span where I know I turn everything off you don't have to work for that full time but you have made yourself a gap in your day where you can say okay in this time everything is quiet I don't have any disturbances and if I get into the flow that's good if not that's also okay but at least I have shuffled everything free from that time spot right so you're not getting disturbed and you're also not letting yourself being lured into doing other things that might be fun for the moment when you know how much harder it is to get back into that flow and flow is really really important for creative people um, because in the flow 
your best art happens, right? You need that flow to really let loose and flow into your art and everything becomes organic and, and just like melts together and you are just creating and the output is much better because when you're in the flow, the instinct takes over, your experience takes over rather than the the analytics and the logic thinking and all these kind of things they are not great for art they are great for learning and deconstructing and analyzing things when you want to learn about the process that is one part of that and you should do a lot of that but when you're creating it's better to let loose and just let the things happen and have your experience as the thing that is that is kind of there um, and happening automatically, right at that point. And this was always important for me. By the way, uh, as you ask me about the 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 what is the flow of my day, I take incredibly much time where I basically I read or I watch films or I play games or stuff like that, where I have time for myself to just suck up information and get new impressions and look into things uh, how other people do them. Um, because the, the other than the logic thinking, creativity is a process that is not always there. You can't um, be creative eight hours a day every single day. You can do something creative and then it needs to kind of reload. You know, it's, I can't explain what that is that is reloading, but you can do a really great work and then it takes a long time and then you can do another really great work. But into it, you can't do one really great work other after another artistically. Technically, that's a different process, right? Like if you if you d do these signs or stuff like that and you have set up a process for yourself, how you create these designs and all these kind of things, then um, you're just executing them. There is no creativity involved. You're just producing. Uh, producing is different from artistically creating in the sense that when you produce something, you execute things that you already know uh, with a look and with a design that you have already finished in your mind. And when you create something artistically, it comes it's a new creative innovative process and innovation is very different from from building something uh, just like after after um uh, like a uh, like a map that you have in your mind sorry i, I didn't i <laughs> had a monologue let's talk about um russell's he said um i collect pics that might be useful in the future like trees skies rocks light effects even reuse some of over and over that's also good like to build up a library of things that you like to use that you use often um to just have them at your finger sorry that you have them at your fingertips um yeah that is that is a really good way to do that and also maybe to decide and this is something this is a, a process i also like i think every every artist is going through that process of trying to figure out what you want to do for some it's easier to like they find early on something they like to do but this is also kind of the personality type that you are like a lot of people are um, more like how can i say um they are on one line on one road that they are going down and they do the same style and the same thing for years without distraction. There's people who say, I like to photograph birds and this is what they do. They photograph birds and there is no interest in their mind to do all kinds of other stuff. They are not distracted from that. They're just doing that, right? Uh, and then there's, there's people who are like this more this kind of expert personality, right? And you find that often in people. And then you have more this, um, uh, uh, how do you say, um, broader spectrum uh, of interest. A generalist is what it's called. Yeah, you have experts and then you have generalists. And generalists are interested in everything. And they're just like they want to suck up all that information and they try to snoop in all kinds of directions. But they, they have the, uh, the quality that they can see the patterns that flow in between these different areas, which is also very, very important, especially today. It's a very important um, quality. I'm more of a generalist because I'm interested in everything. Um, but for me, I often see that when I talk with experts that they can't see anything out of their outside of their field and often they don't um, understand what is going on outside of their field and they don't value what is going outside of their field also. That is kind of 
a little bit disturbing often and uh, that that is also happening um, because you would think there is an openness but of course if you lack the knowledge how can you be open if you don't understand there is something to be open to right this is also we only can see and understand things that are happening inside of our horizon and this is why for example artistically I, I like to have a lot of interest in a lot of different areas because then I have a very very wide horizon right and I like to see the flow of the patterns this is also something how my brain works is that I rather see the 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 um the patterns that are happening rather than the knots that are happening like the dates I'm 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 very bad with dates like if you ask me in uh, what what century was the renaissance uh pfft, I have no idea what time was Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci born I don't know because it's meaningless to me. I don't care about that. What I care about is, of course, I know roughly the area of time and how it follows onto each other. I, I don't I don't think that, for example, the Renaissance was before antique uh, Greek or something culture. You know, I know that the, the it, what how it followed, but not the exact uh, years. But what is more interesting for me is the different concepts and how they like evolved over time and how they cross over um, over time, you know, because that is very important. For example, to understand uh, the connection you have between the French Revolution and um, the modern art that is happening afterwards, right? Why, why did we need this kind of uh, modern art and how did it evolve out of these kind of situations um, over a longer time, of course, not at the same time, uh, but these were kind of the roots and afterwards. You have this kind of opening that's more interesting to me than to know the years exactly all right anyways <laughs> that was a long talk i just wanted to talk about the flow and now we ended up in a completely different area um yeah so yeah there's always some some interesting development going on okay Good. I hope you're, like I said, I hope you're really looking forward to my video uh, that uh, about the photos that I shot in Barcelona. I still have to edit the videos. I still have to edit the photos, uh, but I hope I'm finished with that uh, by next Tuesday. So I have basically one and a half days to all do all of that. <laughs> That's going to be rough, but it's going to be interesting. And I think, uh, yeah, I can, I can still show you some pretty cool stuff. All right, good. And also, by the way, by the way, before I forget it, um, the the Patreon supporters, they get extra videos, bonus videos on how I edit the pictures that I shot in Barcelona. And they also get my raw shots and all of them, but some of them um, to experiment with them on their own so they can follow the things that I'm doing in the bonus videos uh, as a reward for being a Patreon supporter. Right. OK, pretty cool. That's it for today. My friends, thank you very much for watching. I wish you a very nice Halloween. Be careful, uh, stay safe. And yeah, I wish you a nice time and see you soon. Bye.